Welcome to this video on taking a first look at um, an FPOD file. So first we need to open the file. So we'll get uh, the files page open and open a file set. So this is the default. It's kind of my usual preference. Two copies of the FP1, two copies of the FP3. Um, and the the default is this, but for this first view, ignore all files is a good step. Then fit to screen, no files open, good point. Okay, open the file set. So we'll open this one, potato view, um, fit to screen, and then show from start. Okay, so it's now reading through that file and drawing them out. The the FP1 file takes a lot longer to read and write because it has many more clicks. Um, and yeah, first glance, that's good. It's 40 something days. So you want to be sure that matches what, um, what you expected. And you can get the exact figures from the, the menu here. So 41 days, 8 hours, 44 minutes. Um, you can see the dolphins in orange. They sort of declined and increased a bit. Corpses showed a vaguely similar pattern, but a bit different. Um, so a thing um, I'm always interested to see here is whether the unclassed trains, that's this um, very pale grey, whether they line up with the classed ones in this case other cetaceans or porpoises and they they do the biggest groups of unclassed the way you've got the biggest groups of class trains and if there's a big deviation from that and you've got some period of time when there are a lot of unclassed ones that's a red flag it's actually a, a red flag that you could um, get to look at by going to the filters and files page. And here you've got in this bottom panel show classification warnings for. So file one says can't do it, it's not not a C3 or an F3. File three is an F3. And it says um two file warnings, that's not bad actually. Three is not so good, four is distinctly worrying. And here it's saying um, that there's a low percentage of high quality trains or a high percentage of low quality trains. So that is the thing I was trying to explain. And this is is very precautionary, these warnings. So the the warnings are saying, not quite sure about that. And that there's an excess of slow dolphin trains. Doesn't mean they're wrong, but it means there's a risk of sonar errors so if there were a very large number of sonars and some of them were being misclassified as dolphins you'd get this kind of error so two file warnings um okay so we'll just get the, the there's our view again another thing um that i want to look at is the temperature profile so here there's a small change at each end so the air temperature and the sea temperature are roughly similar. This was on the 11th of October. That's probably right. Um, but this is often very revealing. If the pod's not actually in the water, you often get big daily temperature swings because the fisherman who thought was deploying it actually had it in his garage or something like that. Anyway, so that's okay. This is the number of clicks per whatever it is. Six hours is our time unit. So there's uh, four patches here when it's really high. So we might look at one of those in a minute. There's this little flat bit at the end, which suggests that this pod has got time when uh, it's not actually in the water and floating up. So we can look at that by going to one minute time resolution up here top left and then show from start yeah okay so we can see it's lying flat there and then it goes into the water um there's a 
patch of noise, which is from the boat that was deploying it, expect. Um, and then it floats upright. So you would normally crop the file to um, get rid of that end. And there can be all sorts of crazy detections in this period of things that are actually radio signals. When it's in the water, it doesn't hear radio signals mercifully, so you don't get that. And then I'm going to hit the end key to look at the, the far end. Um, again, we've got the same thing here. We've got a period when it's horizontal. We've got a period when it's upside down being lifted. And also we've got the noise of the, the boat. So, so they need cropping off. Um, now we, we can see one of these noise patches here. And um, we can also see that it corresponds to dolphins. So that's okay. Here, here's a patch where you've got a lot of unclassified trains. Um, but the ones that are classified are sonars. So this looks like um, it is a sonar. And judging by the frequencies here, it's quite a low frequency sonar. It's somewhere in the red range. So I'm just going to zoom in on that just to see. Yeah, and here's the frequency of it. So it's a 30 kilohertz sonar. Um, and you can see those clicks going along there. If we um, look at those as number of cycles, um, yeah, then there's quite a lot of long ones that are more than 10 cycles. Um, so that's unlikely from dolphins. And we can look at the, um, the clicks per second. And that's got this very strong pattern. Just hitting F5, function key 5 to lift that up this straight line running through. So this sonar is clicking at about seven clicks a second. Okay, so that was all good. Let's just do show from the start and um, have a look at one of those noise patches. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back to um, and that. Um, so here's a patch of noise when there is no um, the, there's no detections going on, and there you see something building up. It builds up so fast that the pod maxes out. It won't record any more clicks in that minute. It's even louder, and then it's gone again. That's typical of a boat going past. Um, it's got the right sort of length. Time. That could be another one there. So I'm I'm looking forward to see if we've got a longer noise event without cetacean. So this looks more like it. Okay, so here we've got noise building up. I'll just look earlier by clicking the left arrow. So it's building up over this period of three and a half minutes. If I do seek in file one so that it doesn't jump so um yeah then it's another three and a half minutes so it's seven minutes now then it's maxing out um so that that actually could be a boat going past quite slowly um and given that i know where this is from i think i can guess what boat that is um question is have we got Okay, so here we're getting a lot of noise coming in, so this will probably be more interesting. Let's see what this is. Okay, so here we've got these kind of a kind of build up there. Um, show next screen. Yeah, it repeatedly has the these sort of bursts that that cycles. This is amplitude here. Um, sometimes they max it out, but this obviously isn't a boat because they keep going past quite uh, rapidly. Um, and what this is, is um, sediment transport noise. So the um, 
probably quite big waves or, or, or swirls of tidal current are picking up uh, sediment on the seabed, sand basically, and um, bringing it into suspension where it makes a lot of noise. If I just hit the graph button, we get a frequency spectrum of that. Um, so it's got three distinct peaks to it, or not, not altogether separate. But you you can get that with sediment transport noise because the um, the particles uh, get laid down um, in a in a pattern of sizes that depends on the currents. Okay, so basically we've we we've got a period here. When there's quite a lot of um, bursts of noise from moving sediment. Um, okay. Probably we've got a kind of reasonable picture of this um, this file now. Show from start. Um, and I think, yeah, he, he, here's. Is quite a big noise event here, which is another one. Yes, yeah, going to be the same kind of thing. Okay, so what have we learned? The pod's correctly deployed. The site is noisy at times. This green line here is showing us how the pod is having to raise its detection threshold to cope with the noise. Um, we've got a uh, relatively low level of um, error warnings, two species, um, and it looks like a good file. So you would crop it happily, then reprocess it and add it to the useful files folder. Okay, thanks for your attention.